Hey traders, welcome to Profiling the Profit, the week ahead in futures. It is September 25th, 2016. Hope you guys had a great week last week. Um, a lot of things happened last week. Uh, most significantly here in the U.S. was the FOMC meeting and the interest rate announcement on Wednesday. And of course, uh, well, the Fed didn't uh, disappoint. Uh, they did not raise interest rates and the markets felt that was pretty bullish. Um, we're going to take a look at that here in a minute. However, coming up this week, again, the Feds are on tap again. We have a lot of Fed speak, especially here in the U.S. Uh, you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. Federal Reserve members are speaking next week. It is incredible how many people are speaking. Uh, a little crazy, actually. So. I would expect some volatility into this market. We have a couple good news uh, announcements. We do have a GDP number. We do have a consumer sentiment, which is, you know, some eyes will be on that. And then also on Tuesday, I expect um, consumer confidence to maybe shake some people up a little bit in the marketplace. Now, also around the world, we have some speakers going on. Uh, we do have uh, the RBA's governor, Philip Lowe, is going to speak on Monday. Um, we do have Draghi speaking on Monday as well. And then Draghi turns back around and speaks on th or Wednesday, excuse me, Wednesday right here. So he's speaking twice. Now, I don't know if he's trying to kickstart the uh, euro or what, but uh, there's just, I mean, the euro, and we'll look at the euro here in a minute, but the euro is doing nothing right now. Um, also, we have the, the Bank of Japan governor, Kuroto, is speaking on Thursday. Of course, they have Janet down here speaking as well. So there's lots of lots of speakers on the, on the podium next week, or this yes, coming week. And so when that happens, expect volatility. Or um, It would shock me if there was no volatility, but there should be some volatility into the marketplace, so adjust accordingly. Let's get over to the markets last week. Now, this is interesting. We had the NASDAQ break out um, and make brand new highs up here, 4892.25. Um, it sold off nicely Friday, but now the risk zone is down here um, at 4822 area, down into that uh, 4790 area. Now, for the bulls to remain in control, I expect them to, to hold it above this. If we get back below this, so stops are going to have to be below this. If stops get back below this area, um, then we could see a nice movement down into the uh, lows of 4650 area. Um, however, new highs. Apple definitely helped this out. Apple had a, a monster week last week. Um, there's a a lot of speculation why that was, and I don't think anybody really knows. Um, uh, but nonetheless, it definitely helped the, the NASDAQ. Now, while the NASDAQ was making new highs, the ES was not, which is interesting. Um, it did rally. Um, it rallied very nicely. Um, now we're back into that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight week uh, balance zone. Um, we did sell off nicely um, on Friday, as did the NASDAQ and, and the Russell. We just have to see if this zone down here, let's go ahead and take this one out. Let's see if this zone down here holds the zone um, of this 2142 to 12, uh, 2131 is still valid. We want to see this hold. Um, to be able to get uh, back into the market to take out the 2191.50 area. Uh, we think that that could happen still. We believe there's some chance that now we've worked back in the zone that they will take it up. There's some cleaning up to do up here, so I suspect that we'll see that at some point. Um, and then the, the Russell is really, we're keeping our eye on the Russell, and here's why. The ES and the NASDAQ have all made new highs this year. However, we have not seen that out of the Russell. The Russell is lagging behind. If we pull this out a little bit, we'll see that the, the all-time highs at 1292, which happened in May of last year. So, but we are eking closer and closer to this as we speak. We are only 30, well, the high up here is uh, 1261, so that's 31, but we close at 24960 uh, area. So we are still about 40 points away, give or take a couple points uh, from those highs. Not out of the realm of impossible that the Russell could catch up, take out those highs by the end of the year. Now, that is not a prediction. I do not 
uh, make predictions and what we do is we look at the profile to help us out and right now the profile is saying yeah if we can stay above the 1232 the 1221 area that's a good risk zone the bulls will stay in control market needs to stay above the 1193 area for the Russell to have a shot at getting up into that all-time highs but for right now to take out the 1261 area then we're looking at a zone of 1231 down into the uh, 1230 just call it 1232 to 1221 area now, that's a fairly big zone but we we feel that you're gonna have to keep it there a lot of con and consolidation up here they may try to move it in here and shake some people out stops are gonna have to be below that if we get below that weekly stop or that weekly low uh, then you know they could roll this down pretty quickly so keep an eye on those areas alright let's get over to crude crude is an interesting story as well crude's been going sideways here for a while after we made this those highs at 5134 it's just been bouncing back and forth and now for the last four weeks we've been in a tight three dollar and twenty five cent range um, which is great for if you're an intraday trader this has been ideal trading for you I know some people have made a lot of money in this this zone here however we're looking for bigger moves probably ten dollars or, or larger that would be a nice move we're going sideways we're watching two levels right now we're going to go from a zone to a level here we're going to 4651 on the upside and 4297 on the downside I'm looking for breaks uh, either up or down on these zones those will trigger me into the trade um, if you're not comfortable with that type of trigger then you need to wait for either a pulled back or um, whatever you de determine your trigger is but wait for the trigger to get into your trade if this is going to be your game or you trade the crude oil I think there's some great things coming up in crude and I'm expecting it to move uh, we do have the report out and that report out is on Wednesday the EIA petroleum status at 1030 a.m. Eastern St Standard Time here in the US um, that could have an impact on that uh, crude market all right let's go over to gold Goldilocks Goldilocks never disappoints just as we think Goldie is going to break down Goldie found found her legs and popped back up um, we are definitely watching um, the dollar in this well as well we, the dollar has an impact on gold obviously but we have been down here now one two three four five times uh, on these lows here we think if if Goldie comes down to test the whale again then um, we're watching of course the 1304 level that level is going to be important if she breaks that level then we could see some momentum all these guys that are that are long up here will be stuck and they will be bailing out of those positions okay and just understand how that works okay so we've had this consolidation here let's pull back out just a little bit further and we'll take a look at this it's a good opportunity to learn something here so what we do is we saw this sort of cup and handle movement here where they rallied up they went sideways they rally back up again now we're going sideways again so people maybe have been accumulating a long position looking for that that 1394 that we've been talking about or maybe even go up in a further into the 1450 area which is uh, a, a possibility at some point but these people are all long <clears throat> and if this thing rolls over to what we are talking about those people are stuck and when they're stuck that means they're they're they could take a beating especially if this thing moves and it can move this thing could go from 1304 down into this this support level which could be that 1261 that's a pretty darn big move you're holding any type of uh, size in those contracts you're you're definitely sweating some bullets especially if you don't have deep pockets so they will bail out of these positions which will accelerate the move to the downside we are watching for that so watch that 1304 area on gold I think there's a good opportunity at this point not interested to the upside um, what I'd love to see is a, a move to the upside and back into the range that would trigger a trade to the short side but we're ways away from that so right now it's to the short side on gold all right uh, our favorite um, which hasn't done anything in a long time which is the euro I'm gonna pull out on the euro first again and take a look at this as we've talked about before the euro is just going sideways it's been going sideways for over a year now um, it made lows at uh, 104.63 and then has just been just sort of grinding sideways and now is getting even tighter and tighter in here um, I'm expecting moves on this I at this point I'm expecting actually moves to the upside but right now we're not positioned for that and at this point until I get some 
clear, concise um, picture of what this thing is going to do, we are on the sidelines. And when I say clear and concise, I'm talking about what the profile is trying to tell us. Uh, this thing could go either side, um, and there's no advantage to, to actually no advantage to the market right now. This has been going sideways for multiple weeks, and now one, two, three weeks straight side sideways excuse me we're not quite uh, at the POC we're just below it but we're right in the middle of this this balance so but we do know with profiles that moves come out of the middle of a balance so we're expecting a move and you'll have plenty of time to hop on this thing and uh, take advantage of but, but for right now the um, the euro is a no-go it's we're just gonna keep an eye on it there's just nothing happening with it um, all right, let's go look at the notes. All right, the notes, uh, as I said two weeks ago, hit our second target, final target. We're out of this trade. It was a very nice trade. If you didn't didn't get in it, um, the highlight of it was this. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks sideways. And then what happens? We broke down. We got into this trade, came back and tested. So if you didn't get in here, you had an opportunity to get short up into this level. And, of course, it went down, hit our first target, second target <clears throat> on the rally. It took us out. Uh, for any trails that we had. Now um, it's sort of going sideways. It still hasn't broken back into that balance area up above the third, 131.17. So we have a little risk zone here of 131. Let me check my numbers real quick. 131.07 up into that 131.15 area above 131.18 and, and it's just not right. It's back into the consolidation. We could swing up and, and test those highs up here. But if the bears want to continue to the downside, they need to hold this zone down. And uh, let's see if we can't take this out, break that low. Uh, that would be very nice. Now, the, the bonds are uh, feel a lot weaker and show a lot weaker than what the notes are. The bonds have, they're nowhere close to where they broke out um, right now. And, you know, even though they did rally, they got quite a ways to go before that breakout level. So, Right, I would expect bonds maybe to go sideways one more week, maybe have an inside week, and then take and and take out those lows and test to the, the to the downside. I don't really have a zone. I suppose you could say the zone up here is 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 a valid zone. Uh, the 1702 to the 1717. Um, we're not going to trade the bonds. We we trade the notes over the bonds. Um, and that's a little high. I would actually pull that down. Uh, however, anything above this level, and it, it, you can't. I, the short side is not a valid side because it's going to get back into this balance area, and once it is, it could roll back up pretty quickly and take out the highs or test the highs up there. So, watch the notes, watch the bonds if you choose that. That's your that's your market. All right, let's go over the grains real quick. Grains are pretty interesting. Now, here's here's an interesting source. Now, everybody asks, you know, does the grains you know, don't don't they trade together? Aren't they in lockstep with one another? Yes and no. I mean, there is a supply and demand department to this, but they are different because wheat, corn, and soybeans are different because they're used for different things. Corn obviously is big in the ethanol side of things. Soybeans obviously in the food and the oil side of things. And wheat, well, wheat just does a lot of bread. And of course, we use the we we trade a lot with uh, with Russia and stuff. Um, so they don't always. You know they're not always in lockstep with one another like the indices tend to do. Um, they they do act a little bit indifferent from one another. Um, but let's take a look here, and this is interesting. We've been watching this zone up here, this three dollar and forty five cent zone, for quite some time. We said hey, if the market stays below this, you know the shorts have the easy side. We went we poked down here to three dollars and fourteenth, and we've rallied back up in this 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 balance area, and it's been sitting here. Um, and it looks like it's wanting to test this three dollars and forty-five cent zone. If it does, and they break this thing, we could get some quick some quick momentum to the upside. Now, in my opinion, it's going to take an event to get us through there with momentum, um, because the supply and demand in the marketplace is so it's so it's so readily available that that you know. The, it's unbelievable how much corn's in the marketplace right now. I'm actually shocked myself. Now, 
Whether those numbers are accurate or not, I guess that remains to be seen. And, and uh, right now, uh, harvest has started in the southern states, and, and it's now started in the central star, uh, part of the states. Um, or excuse me, the northern part of the states and now the central part of the states. We won't hit the southern states down here for quite some time still, probably into November. But nonetheless, um, corn will be bouncing around in here. Uh, we are going to watch this $3.45 um, area. Now, that being said, let's go take a look at soybeans. And this is the reason I brought that, that up. Soybeans, on the other hand, is not testing that upper, upper area. Soybeans is trying to test the lower area. They are trying to break down even further. We have one, two, three levels down here. And of course, soybeans you know, poked out of last week's high, came back in and rallied and, and sold off all week long. So now we're down here. Could they open up and test these lows? If they do, we could move down into this level, the uh, 915 level, uh, down to 904. That would be a buy zone area for us. That's the risk zone. Um, or if you are short, which I, we are not short, if you are short, that would be a good target there to take all your profits off or at least pull your stops up. So while the corn market looks uh, to be maybe getting some legs, the soybean market looks like it continue wants to continue to sell off. So, just keep an eye on that right now. Watch those zones, the three dollars and forty-five cent area in corn, and of course this zone down here in soybeans. Uh, maybe the fourth time down will be the charm for the beans, and take that out. Um, other than that, guys, uh, listen. Again, I'm always I'm always going to say this, and I, I think it's valid. We have a lot of great resources, and they're all free over at the Market Profile Trading Academy. We have great webinars. We just hosted last week a nice workshop uh, all day long. We went through just a ton of information that was held on the FOMC day last week. Um, hey, if you're struggling, reach out to us. You need some, some direction, need some mentoring, reach out to us, or just get on over to the website and start poking around a little bit. You'll learn quite a bit. We have all these videos uh, on uh, file there. Um, you can go back and look at everything we've said, how we set things up. You can also go back and look at some of our webinars that we did. Josh does a phenomenal job. As a matter of fact, our last one was using a profile to find reliable support and resistance areas. This right here alone is worth the price of admit. I mean, this is huge, okay? This is, and it's free. So go back and, and gobble it up. Look at what we do. Uh, give us a call. Drop us a line. You can always contact us right here at uh, the contact us area. You can either call us or you can go ahead and drop your name and email and reason for contacting us. Otherwise, guys, hey, have a great week. Enjoy, enjoy the uh, fall weather that's happening if, you're, if it's happening in your neck of the woods. Otherwise, have a good trading week. Uh, keep your powder dry, and then uh, we'll talk next week. Take care.